sencillo, bueno, no, 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 no,
uh, before I was alienated from Pete, the last few times I spoke to him, he was going to donate his brain to the government of West Germany so they could uh, study something that would help them defeat communism. That's what he said. And he also claimed that uh, he needed to get out of this region because blood was spurting out of the pupils of his eye. And he hasn't repeated that story to a lot of other people, but he did to me, and so I incorporated it in this song. Can't be seen slow if he finds a dirty book or something to eat. 
used to be pretty good friends with Pete the Pacer and even took him into some Mexican restaurant around here for a dinner and once, and ate dinner with him and gave him the usual jive time lines like, how did you get this way? And all that he would say is just like, I'm just trying to, <laughs> just trying to find some spare change. I'd say, Pete the Pacer, <laughs> what happened? What happened to you that you ended up walking around the streets all the time? <laughs> all he would say is, I'm just trying to find some spare change. To many of my questions, he would evade them just with this, just with the saying that all he was doing was <laughs> trying to find some spare change. Even though once he said, I just went downtown one day and started walking around. You can see him walking round and round. Sometimes he makes this crazy sound with somewhere between a groan and a wheeze as he sloshes along through the cold, cold breeze. He is Pete the Pacer and he's here to stay. He's Pete the Pacer, he hangs out here every day and he doesn't usually go down much below Broadway. But between here and first out on Main Hill's grave, up and down both sides of the street he goes. Poking through the garbage cans, he's in slow. If he finds a dirty
big confrontation with Pete the Pacer, and this ended all interaction besides just uh, visual interaction, was when he came up to me in his, in his usual voice that kind of has this sort of gentle, soft voice that kind of takes you aback. And he said, uh, could you spare, do you have any spare change or something? I said, yes, I have some. I decided just to be honest with Pete. I said, yes, I have some, Pete, but not for you. And suddenly there was this burst of feeling and, and tension. And I just walked away down the street, and he actually followed me for a ways. And he, he said this one sentence about three times. He said, I'll see you in court. I don't know what he meant by that. Perhaps he was going to take me to the judge for not giving him money. But that was pretty strange. I'll see you in court. You can see him walking round and round. Sometimes he makes this crazy sound. It's somewhere between a crow and a bees. As he sloshes along to the cold, cold breeze, he's
if you want to talk to Pete the Pacer, if you're very friendly, perhaps you can. He, Pete the Pacer <coughs> does seem to be basically a, a friendly character, despite what happened between Pete the Pacer and my friend. Um, half of my friends are assholes to some degree, so, and perhaps I am too. I have a saying, there's so many assholes in the world, you can't help but make friends with a few of them. And I made friends with Pete the Pacer. Maybe someday you'll make friends with me. <laughs> He's a wild, crazy guy with a gleam in his eye. There's some change in 